All right. Hello, everyone. Thank you for uh, having us. I'm Vasily Triant, Chief Operating Officer here at UJet. And I'm here to talk to you today about next generation AI powered customer experience. And essentially, you know, kind of our, our tagline for today is Omni Channel has jumped the shark. And uh, trust me, I know you're thinking the same thing I was originally thinking like, what is jump the shark? So essentially, it's like a, a meme targeted around when things are no longer you know, relevant, it's, it's something that you're kind of doing to grab attention towards it, trying to make it relevant, but the reality is it's kind of already lost its place in time. So this came from when Fonzie, like Happy Days was kind of like over and done with, wanted to attract attention back to the show, get followership back going. And Fonzie essentially did a ski jump in his leather jacket and he jumped a shark. And the essentially like nothing happened with it. No one wanted to continue watching the show and it kind of fell on his face. And, and that's essentially where we're at with Omnichannel, right? It's it's essentially no longer relevant. And we're going to talk about what, why today. You know, customer interactions, customer experience, customer service, it's just not going very well. There's a lot of wonderful marketing messages out there around what people can do, what people are doing, but we're all experiencing the same thing, right? Like I'm frustrated. The customer service here is horrible. Never again. You can see it on social media, Twitter, Facebook, you name it. But the majority of customer service interactions are just not positive. And, and the reason is like when we talk about omni-channel, the idea is like, hey, lots of channels to the customers so that they can really interact with the brand on a, on a channel of their choice. But this is our experience, right? This is omni-channel. Go to an app, go to a website. I want to contact the brand hit contact us, and essentially, what do you have here, right? It brings you into a random phone number you're calling in. Everybody is treated equally. So, hey, please listen. You know, our, our menu options have changed. Let me, you know, go through the first, you know, eight or nine options and tell you what we have. And you go through the traditional IVR tree, right? And this is the experience that we're having. And so, essentially, giving lots of channels hasn't really changed what we're getting despite all the advances in technology over the last 14, 15 years. And so there's all these objectives that we have as brands that we want to provide better customer experience and better customer service. They're both our objectives, but they're also our challenges, right? Through the customer journey for you and me as end customers. So we want consistent, predictable customer experience across all the departments. I'm not treated one way when I'm talking to you know uh, accounts receivable, and a different way when I'm talking about a problem I'm having with my account, with you know the like a problem with my ticket or a problem with booking a hotel. I still want you to treat me as a level of customer that you may see me you know anywhere else in the business. I want conversational self service beyond just like basic question and answer or my application isn't ready to be serviced. I want more contextual information. I want to be personalized. I want continuity when I'm escalating between automation, which is huge, and we'll talk a little bit about that in a moment, and live agent, rather than re-explaining my entire problem. Data and device being leveraged for predictive and contextualized support. So there's things that we're doing on the web, there's things we're doing on our mobile devices. Before we ever touch base with a brand, like leverage that information and, and know a little bit about me before I get in. Like all this stuff is available today and we use it for sales and marketing use cases, but it's dropped when it comes to customer service and customer support. Integrating business processes and policies into the, into the process, making resolution effortless and post customer support retention. Meaning when I'm done with my problem, I'm not only happy, but I want to like do more business with that brand rather than, okay, solve my problem, but, and essentially kind of what's the pinnacle of the whole thing, right? Customer experience as a growth engine for our business. So when we look at customer experience, there's essentially three pillars that happen in, in a journey across, you know, the customer support process. When I, as a customer, want to connect with a brand, the first thing is I want to connect. I'm going to connect with an agent. I'm going to connect with someone, whether that's chat, voice, you know, some other means. And then I want to align. I want to align who I am and what my problems are to the agent and ultimately then get to a resolution. And that connect and align is so key to getting to the resolution and the overall experience. But the reality is everybody is so focused on resolution, meaning I'm going to show you how we're going to resolve the problem. Brands build technologies, 
Lots of companies are building technology to say, here's how we're going to get to resolution. And we forget about the connect and aligning piece of the process, which is so important. And because we're so focused on resolution, that human element in the beginning about connecting and aligning the agent is just lost, right? Now, what we do is essentially we leverage modern technologies in order to transcend omnichannel, blend everything seamlessly, and get to that point where we're connecting and aligning because we know who you are. We know where you are. We know where you've been, what you've been doing, where you're coming from. And essentially, we've created that connecting and aligning process. Now, a lot of times, the way we explain this is we call you know, us as end customers are the forgotten persona in this omni-channel customer experience. It's about the supervisors providing the, re the metrics on resolutions. It's about the agents being able to have everything in one interface. But that connecting part, that aligning part is lost in, in the technology transitions here. So we want to interact more naturally. We're all on our smartphones. We're all on the web. We're getting into brands with technology that is actually tracking kind of the places we've been. So if I'm on a knowledge base article looking at, you know, how do I, you know, upgrade to the latest software on my application, once I get to somebody, they can actually see that that's where I've been. That's the connecting and aligning part. And then we can automate efficiently, meaning let's take this, the task, the simple task that an agent or someone may be doing or customer, and let's automate those with the information we have, whether that's authentication, whether that's the transition from automation into live agent or the opening and closing of tickets. This is simplicity in that customer journey. This is the way to create that connection and alignment. And then resolution is the product out of that because we've been able to bridge that customer and agent personas together. We need to unify all data. So one of the things that we've done here at UJet is we've taken all the data that exists in the CRM platform and we've unified it all in one place, essentially creating the only single data lake on the market. We're not storing information in the contact center and then doing forwarding into the CRM at some 30 to 60 minute point later in the day. We're doing it real time. So when a customer or agent are doing that connecting and alignment, the data is all there real time. Everything from sharing pictures, sharing videos, where they came from, their geolocation data, how much time they spent on, on a different part of the website, we're able to bring that all into one place, regardless of what CRM or ticketing platform a customer may be using. On top of it, we've essentially solved the security and privacy requirements, data sovereignty based on region of the world, because UJet, we're no longer storing any of that data. And every platform on the market today is actually storing the data and then trying to link it back to the CRM. Essentially what we've done is built that single data lake with the CRM players. We're gonna leverage the smartphone, the, essentially the device that we're all using today. We're using Androids, we're using iPhones to connect to brands. Now, we might not think of it as that we're connecting to brands via that, but when you go on to a hotel's mobile app and then you decide to call for reservation or chat with an agent, we're leveraging that smartphone and there's so much data that we can take and contextualize and really get to that predictive contextualized journey, bring that information between the customer and the agent, allowing them to just operate more efficiently. We can also allow the channel switching to happen where you're seamlessly moving from things like voice to chat, chat to SMS, or simultaneously blending the channels together, leveraging them at the same time to provide more information uh, to your end customers in order to solve those, those problems. These also now create more natural experiences. When you think about how we're interacting for the most part on a day-to-day -day basis with the brands that we're purchasing products and services from, we're still leveraging the same types of processes that existed for the last 30, 40 years, right? Call in, give me your last name, give me your PIN number, type in your account number and give me your passcode, right? Number one, these things can be, are, are susceptible to fraud on a massive scale. And number two, they're not in the actual process of how we're used to behaving today. We open our phones with touch ID or face ID, right? We talk to things. We're using biometrics, which actually is much more uh, secure and safe. And we now can leverage that in the contact center. We are used to sharing photos and videos and 
textual information with our friends, our family, and everyone in order to kind of like talk about how our days are going, the vacations we've been on. We should be able to leverage that same information in order to experience like a, a easier support resolution. So when I'm having a problem with my XYZ widget at home, I should be able to take a video and show you or a picture rather than you having to send a technician out to look at something and then give me the resolution and come back later in order to actually give me the final solution to the problem here. So, you know, these are things that we can do in order to transcend that omni-channel experience and really blend all that together. So we've essentially leveraged intelligence to transcend omni-channel. Now we're gonna blend artificial intelligence or let's just say add intelligence throughout the platform for like dynamic routing, bonding virtual and live agents together. This is where you take that self-service in order to eliminate very simple transactions and, and simple processes. And you may be looking to give account balances, you wanna refund an order, locate my order, but if you need to escalate to a live agent, like how do we make that seamless and how do we make it natural? We can leverage AI in order to make that seamless and to get to the right person, but also blend it where the user doesn't really realize that they've gone from automation to live. They may have just gone from chat to a voice call or something in order to that effect. Also make it so that people don't have to like recontact support. I mean, how many times are you in a chat bot on a, co on a company's website and you're talking with the chat bot and then all of a sudden you get to the end and they're like, have we helped solve the problem? And the answer is no, I need to speak to somebody live. What's the next thing it says? Contact support. But didn't I contact support in the beginning and that's how I got to the chat bot in the first place? The next thing we can do by leveraging intelligence in the right place, both making it contextual, is now we can also take agents and provide them with like next best response leveraging all the data from past transactions, leveraging that real-time data that we were showing before into that single system of record and giving the agent like, this is the response based on what we're listening to that will solve this transaction better and more seamlessly than the last five transactions. Cause we've assimilated that data, run algorithms behind it and looked at the resolutions of all those past transactions. Essentially we're giving more intelligent automation reducing handle times, ultimately getting to resolution quicker and providing better customer satisfaction. So when we look at some of the customers that here at UJet we've deployed and some of the resolutions that we've given them, right? Outdoorsy, essentially, you know, renting RVs, providing, you know, camping experiences through mobile and web applications. They needed something that was able to be customized at the drop of a hat. They needed it plug and play. It needed to be able to scale and, and be reliable out of the box and integrated real time with our CRM because that was their system of record. And so what we brought to the table was one, the ability to scale rapidly. We're known as the most scalable platform on the market, able to do it automatically without having to deploy additional infrastructure in order to, to enable this to happen with customers. We partnered with Calabrio in order to give that seamless workforce management scheduling and a tight integration with their CRM platform customer. We also, because they are a mobile and web company, we're able to provide them an in-app experience, something that really doesn't exist out there. And while brands have applications like a mobile app, whether that's a hotel, an airline, a health insurance company, when you hit contact support, it always gives you a number in which you can click on, which throws you out to an iPhone or Android dialer. We've essentially been able to blend that so the customer never leaves that mobile app for outdoorsy. And then you get voice, in-app, communications, chat, SMS, and workforce management all under one umbrella provided by UJet. And so they've been able to realize more efficiency, the ability to make changes without having to essentially employ a developer on staff to make those changes, right? Now there are some applications out there that don't need a developer, but some of the newer applications on the market, you actually need an engineering development resource in order to make changes and do other programming in order to make the system more efficient as time goes on. Another customer of ours, I mean, this is just such a great company, Fitbit, right? They provide the wearables that you know, allow you to, to, to be more fit, right? In order to exercise, kind of track the things that you're doing. And they were already on a cloud platform uh, before they, they found UJet, but they were having issues with scale from a global perspective. So they were in China, they were throughout Europe, they're having call quality problems, reliability issues, 
uh, with their previous platform and the ability to meet kind of the GDPR data privacy and, and security requirements. Because when those platforms are deploying, they're still storing all that information and you have to find a way to get that information into kind of GDR, GDPR compliant uh, architecture. And it need to be able to integrate with their proprietary CRM uh, to the leverage that customer data to provide better answers real time. And so we were the only solution on the market that was really able to give them global reach on a single tenant, meaning there's just one application for them globally, regardless of what country they were in. And we were able to get them GDPR compliant at the same time. We were providing them in-app voice and chat support for both iOS and Android, completely unified all that data in the CRM. They have seen already within the first two months of them deploying this originally, they saw a 28% reduction in average handle time for in-app calls. And that translates both to cost savings, but also to reduced customer friction in those interactions. It essentially makes you and I happier, right? When things get handled faster, we feel like you know, people are responding to us quicker. They feel like they're more attentive to us. We've deployed in nine different languages spanning 18 countries. And we've done this, you know, UJet plus Calabria, we've delivered a combined solution solving their problems globally. And, and essentially what we're going to do now is I'm going to let Nate do a demonstration real quickly for you and show you, you know, kind of a, an application customized for a specific vertical and, and demonstrate exactly what we're talking about here. Thanks, Vasily. What I'm sharing on my screen is the UJet portal, and it's going to be the realization of everything that Silly just went through, contextual support in a modern age. In fact, what you're seeing on the right-hand side of the screen is the UJet portal. It's not a desktop download. Instead, it's a web-based portal that allows you to make real-time changes for your contact center. This is where your agents can go, where your administrators can go, your managers, supervisors, really your team can go to manage the contact center. What you're also seeing is that UJEP provides curated customer service journeys based off the entry point. Yes, we provide that voice, messaging, chat, SMS channels, but we also allow you to curate customer service journey for it. So we're going to look at an iOS and Android in-app experience. It's about an IVR experience, even a web experience, and we could even look at an SMS experience. Now, of course, agents can take voice calls and chats through this portal but instead we want to embed them within their CRM. What I'm demonstrating on is Salesforce Service Cloud where you can see the agent voice and chat adapter embed it within their cloud-based CRM so that they have all of the information they need in one page, one view. And now on the left-hand side of my screen, what you're seeing is a smartphone. This smartphone is your users. In this case, we're going to look at users calling in about maybe their insurance or their healthcare care. And we're going to see how they can call in we're going to see how they can go through an iOS or Android application, how they could even text in or go through a mobile desktop or tablet website. To get us started today, we're going to look at that iOS and Android experience. This customer is within their healthcare, within their insurance app. As they go into it, they come to this point where they need support, a point where all of us have been at. Now, usually they could click on contact us and it would actually send them to a separate phone number, it would send them to an IVR, it would send them to an email outside of the application. With UJet, we can actually provide an embedded experience inside the application. So inside the application, and I'm actually going to pause for a second on my side because my app did something just a little funny there. So inside the application, we can produce a visual menu. This visual menu allows for dynamic omnichannel channel steering. Here's what I mean. We can actually select appropriate channels depending on their selection. And depending on their selection, they can even be redirected toward an FAQ page, toward a message, toward whatever's best for them. Before helping out this customer, we're going to look at our agents. We're going to make sure that our agents come to available. And we're also going to make some real-time administrative changes to show the power of UJet. For example, maybe as an operation manager, maybe as a customer support team, you've decided that you don't want to offer this specific channel for this specific reason. In real time, you can make that change. And because you've deselected, in this case, email as an example, as this customer comes back in, they no longer see email as an option. They now just see chat, schedule a call, call now. Now, at this point, I could go ahead and schedule a call, and I could look at my local time zone. 
I could look at the hours of operation of this queue and I could look at how many calls are already in queue and provide as much as is possible a guaranteed callback. I'm going to go ahead and choose to call in now. So as the customer on the left-hand side of my screen is calling in, the agent on the right-hand side of the screen is receiving that call. We can set up auto answer. We can set up click to answer as I just demonstrated. And we're going to connect that agent embedded within their CRM. Now, as we're on this phone call, the agent can, of course, do everything you'd expect. We can put them on hold, add a third or fourth party, even transfer using our digital directory. But in addition to all of that, we're going to bring more information securely to this agent. For example, what you're seeing is how we can securely bring information from the customer's application to the agent's view. We can see what app version the customer is on, what, if any, recent app error codes they've had, their operating system, if they're verified using username and password. In other words, whatever would best help out your agents, we can bring that in. Or in this specific use case, let's imagine that this is a customer calling in about their health care, calling in about their health insurance, some things that are HIPAA compliant, highly secure. Before we make changes for this customer, let's go through a verification process. But instead of asking for their mother's maiden name and address, let's send them a push notification to leverage their face ID, their touch ID, and let's send through that biometric verification in real time and store it within their cloud-based CRM. Maybe you need additional information as an agent. You need to request that screenshot of the technical issue, or you want to request that photo of their insurance claim of their bill. I can, again, send them a push notification where they can have the option to take a photo now or pull a photo from their library. They choose from their library, and they can upload that accident they had, that insurance claim that they had that they need to submit. And what we're doing here is we're decreasing average channel time, we're increasing first contact resolution, and we're making it so that the agent can easily pull information from the customer while on a phone call with them, not having to go through a separate email or an additional channel or maybe they need a video. What if an agent could send a push notification to the customer in real time saying, hey, can we see that video of that thing you're talking about? They could again choose from their library or in real time they can go ahead and get that video of their issue, of that setup, and they can send it in. What the agent's going to be able to do is within their UJet cell phone adapter embedded within their CRM where all of their information is living. The agent's going to be able to receive and view that video. They can press play, they can press pause, they can watch it again, whatever's needed in order to best help out this customer. And what's nice about it is all of this information can be stored wherever you specify. It can be stored in your CRM, it can be stored in a separate cloud storage, such as S3, such as Google Cloud Storage, and it can be tied to that case, tied to that ticket for easy reference. Then when the call is over, whether the agent ends it or the customer ends it, let's go ahead and get some customer satisfaction. And let's not send them out to a separate text message or a separate IVR or email, but embedded inside the application, let's ask them for quantitative and qualitative feedback. That's the power of UJet support embedded within the application. But for some of you, you might not have that mobile application and still UJet has solutions for you. In fact, what we provide is a modern IVR solution, an IVR solution that allows for intelligent routing, an IVR solution that's easy to set up and easy to configure. In fact, what you're seeing on my screen right now is our IVR editor. It's not a Visio flow chart, it's not coded. It's click and set up code and allows you to have enterprise functionality in an easy to use way. Now for this next example, this customer is going to be calling in again to the healthcare provider to their insurance company. And what we're going to do is we're going to have this health insurance customer connect with a voice virtual agent, a virtual agent that can maybe help them make a payment. That virtual agent can gather information, provide self-service, but then if needed, even escalate to a human agent. As we do this, uh, this customer is going to call in, we're going to demonstrate both dial tone routing as well as natural language processing. Let's check it out. Welcome to you, Jet. Press one for technical support. I'm going to go ahead and for press three for current orders, current claims. Shows help with current orders. Press one for general questions. Press two for returns. We'll As I select three. general questions, I'm going to connect this customer with the contextual you voice call virtual call agent. Representative. Your call may be recorded for monitoring and training purposes. Hi, thanks for calling. 
I can help you carry out billing and account tasks. How can I assist you today? Can I check my account balance? I'd be happy to help with your account balance. What are the last four digits of the card that you're calling about? Four, five, six, seven. At this point, it's doing an API call to your back. Thanks, got it. Your current account balance is $656. Would you like to make a payment today? Yes, please. Would you like to pay your current balance of $656, your last statement balance of $459, or another amount? My last statement balance. Great. Let's get a payment of $459 started. When would you like the scheduled payment to take place? October 5th. Great, thanks. Would you like to pay from the account called My Checking that you've used previously? Yes, please. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and schedule that payment, then I'll escalate it. Perfect. Your payment of $459 has been scheduled for the 5th of October, 2021. Is there anything else I can help with today? Can I speak with an agent? As we connect with an agent, we let's get more contextual agent. information from this customer. Is there anything testament. else I can help with today? If you would like to interact via text messages during this call for further assistance, please press 1. I'm going to press 1 you and give consent to receive that text message. Sent to your phone number. Please check the text message for next. At this point, I'm a customer calling in for support and I'm on hold. But when I called into customer support, I could have been intelligently routed. I could have connected with this voice virtual agent that was able to understand natural language processing, was able to provide self-service, and then able to escalate me to a human agent. And as I'm on hold for this human agent, we want to either prevent hold or make the most of it. We could send this customer toward a callback. Or what I've done is I'm actually allowing this customer to interact via text message while they wait. So this customer, they're actually going to go ahead and upload their account ID. They can even take a real-time picture of that technical issue they're having, and they can upload it through SMS and MMS. In other words, with UJET, instead of a customer passively waiting on hold, they can actively contribute to their upcoming phone call. Again, what we're going to see is this is going to decrease average channel time, increase first contact resolution, and most importantly, make for a better overall customer service experience. Now the agent can come to available, and again, whether it's through click to answer or auto answer, this skilled agent is going to connect with this customer. The first thing you're going to notice is the consistency between this voice experience, this agent experience, and what we saw earlier with our in-app phone call. There's a case pop within your CRM. We're going to share as much contextual information as possible, and some of that information includes that text message they just received from the customer. They can see the customer's order ID. They can see the customer's picture. And with that, they're better able to help out this customer. Imagine that they're a healthcare patient calling in. You now know that they're calling in about this specific issue or they're an insurance customer calling in and you know that they've already made their payment, yet they still need additional help. You have all of that context. Within this phone call, I'm able to complete a high quality phone call with active active resiliency throughout its backend. But in addition, I'm again able to leverage modern functionality to improve the quality of service. For example, not only could I receive that text message before the call was connected, but even during the call, I can continue to interact with this customer via text message. Another way to look at it is actually how you talk to your friends and family. When you talk to your friends and family, you don't talk to them on the phone and say, let me hang up, let me email you a picture later. No, while you're on the phone call, you go ahead and provide that support. Or an example we often see from our clients is simply they have trouble hearing a customer. They maybe need to better understand the last name, their email address. So what if they could get that simultaneously while they're on a phone call through text message? In other words, what you're seeing here is, yes, UJet provides an omni-channel solution that includes discrete channels of voice, messaging, chat, and SMS, but we also leverage blended channels. Just like in our everyday life, how we're using omni-channel in a blended way, UJet allows for that for your customer service team. And now as this call ends, let's again get some contextual customer satisfaction, not by sending them to a separate text message or email, but within the IVR. Please rate your satisfaction on a scale of one to five, with five being the best rate. With all of that information being updated in real time into your correlated CRM. 
what you're starting to see with UJet is how it's powerful for your customers. It's powerful your, for your agents, regardless of your customer's entry points and keeping your agents within the CRM. And as in the last example today, we're gonna to look at one more customer entry point. And that's through a website. It could be a desktop website, a mobile website, tablet website. Regardless, we wanna provide that same level of embedded contextual customer support. Maybe this customer is reaching out and they can actually specify what they're reaching out about. And just like we saw earlier, depending on their selection, we can provide them with a dynamic omni-channel option. You can steer them toward the best channel, whether it's an actual contact channel or even a redirection towards self-service. Depending on that channel, you can connect them with different agents or as is the case I'm demonstrating here with my chat, you could even connect them with the chatbot. A chatbot that actually leverages that virtual agent that we saw earlier so that you only build one virtual agent that can work for both voice as well as chat. The only difference for this chatbot is that you can leverage things like emojis, pictures, buttons, GIFs, all of the digital media because it's through a digital channel. For example, this chatbot is asking me about setting up an order or editing an existing order, again, pulling dynamic information about me as a user. I could select one of these buttons or I could actually just say, let's get started by creating a new order. Or even try to be polite and use please. What we're seeing here is that the chatbot's also able to understand natural language. It's going to look for that intent and initiate that, pro uh, that process. At this point, it might ask for the user's email address. It might ask for two-packed authentication, additional information, so that it can create that order. Or maybe I'm contacting my insurers. Maybe I'm contacting my doctor's office and I want to check in about a new plan. It's going to go ahead and use that information, connect with your backend API or APIs, and it's going to process that change, process that order. But one thing we don't talk about often enough is sometimes the black hole that a chatbot or a virtual agent can be. It's like I'm talking to this chatbot, I'm talking to the voice bot, and it's not understanding me. With our solution, you can easily configure it so that if you type in nonsense, if you ask about something it doesn't recognize, if you ask to speak to an agent, or you're just obviously getting heated in the conversation, it can have a graceful failover to a human agent who's skilled for this conversation. So what we've done is we've gone from that chatbot virtual experience into now a connected human agent experience. And notice how your agent is again having that consistent experience embedded within the CRM. They provide it with the entire conversation that the customers had so far with the chatbot. And they're able to reach out using either free form text or even by leveraging UJet's chat shortcuts so that they can be more efficient, more accurate. And at this point, you're already going to know what's next because when I end this chat, instead of sending them to an IVR, instead of sending them to an email, let's get their customer satisfaction embedded within their entry point, embedded within this web experience. This is the UJet solution. This is the solution we provide for a modern omnichannel contact center. It's a solution with resiliency on the front end as well as on the back end that allows for high quality voice calls and allows for your agents and your customers to maintain consistency wherever they're at. Thanks for letting me share it with you. Nate, thank you very much for that demo. That was fantastic. And now we'll uh, open it up to any Q&A. Hi, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I'm Angela Carpentier, a Partner Development Manager here at Calabrio. And with me, I have Vasily to open up our Q&A session for today. Good morning, Vasily. How are you? I'm great, Angela. Thank you for uh, having me here today. Great. We've got a few questions already, so I'm going to get started. Um, feel free as we're going through this Q&A session. We have about 15 minutes here to take as many as we can get in. Um, so first question off the bat. Um, you mentioned time customers spend on website. How does UJet go about calculating this? Yeah, so there's a number, I, I guess I should back up, right? There's, there's been technology that exists out there that essentially can track how much time you spend per web page on someone's site, what essentially MAC address or IP address you're coming from. It also happens on mobile, right? Your mobile device captures all this information. So whether you're on a support page, a sales page for you know widget x or widget y and so on and so forth and 
it, th these use cases have existed for a while, but only translated into sales and marketing information. That's how companies tee up ads to you or determine like, oh, I think that, you know, Angela, the next product you're going to buy is this. And so I'm going to like go ahead and, and get this stocked in region and so on. What we've done is essentially captured that same information by, you know, essentially embedding our SDK within a brand's website or in their mobile app. That information then just passes through to us. And, and what we do with that is really up to the, the brand themselves around, okay, do I want to leverage that information for routing to the correct place in a contact center and skipping IVR steps? So if I already know they're looking at support for a MacBook Air, I'll just skip asking if they need something for an iPhone or something else, just get them straight to the support department for a MacBook Air, you know, those types of things. Cool. But it's all out there. We're just now bringing it into customer experience. That's awesome. That's really cool. Uh, can you, is your product integrated within the Avaya CM systems? So we, so Avaya is obviously is the, PX, the, the PBX, right? Call manager uh, platform. We can integrate to any PBX platform via, you know, essentially just a SIP connection. Now, technically, are we, we're not doing any federated presence or anything like that. So you have your business phones on, you know, for example, on the Avaya side. We'll take over the call center platform, but essentially you can have calls coming into the Avaya, transitioning into the UJEB platform for the call centers. And if we need to route it back to an Avaya phone, like to a general desk user, we can do that as well. Great, awesome. Um, next question, how are you tracking the sentiment of the customer in a conversation and can the chat bot deal with a difficult situation by itself? Um, okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll handle those two things separately, right? So. Sentiment starts out with an initial kind of learning of within every brand it's different, right? So once you kind of implement um, any type of virtual agent, right? You start with a certain base of like, okay, what is positive and negative sentiment to us? And it can be everything from keywords to phrases. And then what the system does is it learns over time combined with some input from agents around, you know, this was positive or this was a, a negative interaction and, and scoring those, those interactions. So it'll learn over time and continue to add more to its vocabulary and system. And we're leveraging literally some of the best NLP in the world uh, to do that. Um, so it will differ by brand. Now it, it's pretty accurate. It's not perfect, but it's pretty darn accurate, right? But there are some things, right? I, I mean, I'll just give kind of the goofy example from when I was a kid, right? You know, it used to be for my parents that when you said bad, it meant something was bad. And then in the 80s, it became bad meant like, oh, that's really good. <laughs> so there are some things like that that a brand would have to, uh, you know, note that this phrase within their, you know, kind of uh, journey and, and, and portfolio would be something actually that's positive or negative, something to that effect. So, but, but sentiment is both a flag for real time. Do I need to bring an agent in right away? Do I need to transfer to a different department? So we can actually see that sentiment and uh, redirect that right away rather than letting it go through the process, which is what happens today. A you know, supervisor gets a report you know, within an hour or two and says, hey, we had negative sentiment or here was our NPS score that we're, we're kind of seeing across this group of agents. It's all after the fact. You want to see it real time. You want to react uh, right now. Um, can chatbots, can virtual agents on chat or voice deal with difficult situations? It gets better over time. So like day one, you know, there's only so much it can deal with with the information it has. As it gets more learning, because it does learn and it grows in the use cases that it's deployed before and how much you know, information I can get. Now, it also depends on how much information we're getting from other systems. So when you deal with a difficult situation, it really comes down to like, do I have the information to actually provide the answers back? Um, so that's where like, we'll determine intent, we'll determine past interactions, and then if we need to bring in a live agent. Reality is across the globe right now, virtual agents are being used to automate simple transactions or kind of the upfront uh, triage of something to pass to a live agent. The problem is most virtual agent companies like that only do virtual agent are trying to pitch this stuff about deflection and you know we're going to like decrease your call volumes and you can let agents go 100% across the board there's no definitive information that exists on the market you can talk to any analyst 
that says, if I implement virtual agents, I've just you know, removed 20% of my workforce or 10% of my workforce. What's actually happening is total interactions are rising. And I can give you three to four personal experiences of mine over just the last six months where I go to contact a brand that, I'm, that I use. Um, you know, one recently was Showtime, for example, uh, for a, a fight that I got and it was, a, it was a big mess. You go in, it's all a chatbot and chatbot's not answering my question. Guess what I do? Like it throws me in a loop trying to get me out. So mm -hmm. I'm like, forget this, I'm gonna find the phone number. I find the phone number and call in now. That chatbot thinks that I, they deflected me. They did, they deflected me to a voice call. Mm -hmm. What really needs to happen is, can't solve that problem, you need to transition that interaction now to a voice interaction or some other medium to solve the problem to improve the customer experience. Because you know, for me, the customer experience stunk. For the brand, they got two interactions and they got false positive, right? They got a false positive that they had a deflection from it. Yeah, awesome, thank you. Got a couple more coming in. Um, how can you speak to how you integrate with the Collaborate One platform? So, gosh, that's a that's a big question, but I, but I I love it. When you when you look at the market, right? There's a number, obviously, of kind of all in one platforms, and we've had a lot of experience integrating the different platforms. When when we all got together and built this integration, right? The the challenge for UJet being such a modern platform is when we integrate with with someone else, we need them to be able to handle that real time information and, and kind of APIs because we're streaming all data real time. And most systems is kind of batch and process, call and pick up type of thing. And frankly, Calabria was like the first and like literally the only kind of complete turnkey WFO platform that will accept that real time information from us and those APIs. And so not only have we made it a, a very seamless and real time integration, but also very scalable. And we're working on further enhancements around the agent and the supervisor uh, pictures as we go along, because whether it remains two products at the end of the day, right? People want to see more kind of seamless, uh, you know, supervisory capabilities and uh, administration capabilities. And so those are some of our uh, roadmap items that we're working on together. But for our customers, what they see is it is a very unified solution, despite it being two products, which doesn't exist on the market with, with other players, right? It becomes two very disjointed solutions and you're trying to kind of see when the data is going in and going out. Awesome. A um, couple more here. Does, going back to kind of sentiment, does the system recognize tone for sentiment or only words? Uh, both. It can recognize tone intonation, intonation kind of fluctuations, right? Which can determine, you know, obviously negative sentiment or frustration uh, as well as words. Cool, awesome. Um, and then everyone talks about omni-channel and that is what we should be doing, but you're saying omni-channel is no longer relevant. Why and what is the right step to improve customer service? I love that question. So I always, you know, one of the reasons why I got into this industry was I just found a passion for wanting to affect the experiences of me as an individual, right? So the, the amazing thing about customer experience is we all, are involved in it every day, right? Whether we're dealing with airlines, hotels, mobile phone carriers, uh, I mean, who knows, right? You know, calling into universities to check on your kids' grades or something like that. We experience it every day. So what we do can change that experience. The problem with this space is that you get a bunch of marketing professionals, right? And sorry to anybody that's from a marketing department, but and we create these buzzwords, we create these things that attach to like improvement and and changing the world and making it a better place. And omni-channel is one of those words, right? Omni-channel word was, was created and shifted from the multi-channel world, which was a fit. So multi-channel started in the early mid 2000s and it failed, right? And the idea there was lots of channels to your customers, go supply all these things because cloud is here now, it's all subscription. You don't have to buy these big clunky boxes, but it was recognized like agents just had a flood of these different interfaces now. Email was here, chat was there, voice was coming in on my phone. And for the end customer though, they just saw like, I'm contacting one brand. So Omnichannel came about because people said, hey, if we unify the agent interface, then happy agent makes happy customer. But we've lost that perspective of how do I want my experience to, to change? The first thing we do when we contact a brand or a service is we need to connect with an agent. 
Connect meaning like who you are, who I am, and understand where I'm coming from, right, first and foremost. Then we need to analyze the problem and then ultimately get to resolution. Omnichannel focuses on this whole thing that like, if you just have one interface, you'll have a resolution and it forgets the connect and analyze. So when we say like omnichannel, like omnichannel has kind of jumped the shark and, and is kind of like outdated. It's not that having all the, inter the, the channels in one place is outdated. It's that you've completely forgotten the customer persona, you and me as individuals connecting with, with uh, products and services. And you need to connect with somebody where they're at. Don't push them to different places. Don't force them to go to another you know, channel or another place on your website. Like bring them all into one place. And this is essentially kind of like digitalization of your customer experience. And that blends even to kind of social. Once somebody goes to Twitter or Facebook, you broke the customer experience because they went to Twitter or Facebook because they couldn't deal with you within your mobile app or within your website. And they're going there to complain and bitch cam candidly and hoping that if their voice will be heard by others and then someone will say, okay, fine, I'm gonna give you a credit or I'm gonna solve your problem. People don't go to Twitter and Facebook because they just want to ask a general question. They've already done something before and their frustration level has reached a point. Perfect. Um, next question. Do you feel NLP can provide a deterministic and consistent solution over the time as it is intended to or a hybrid approach of AI human can be a more holistic solution in future? I, you know, we've had ebbs and flow. That's obviously a very complex question. I'm going to try to answer it the best I can. Um, we've had ebbs and flows of automation through customer experience over the last, at this point, 22, 23 years, I just call it 25 to be safe, right? Mm -hmm. We've gone through, hey, live answer, right? No, nope, we're going to IVRs. No, we're going to speech recognition, try to handle everything in kind of the IVR, right? That was in the early 2000s when really there was a drive to just speech automate everything. And then all of a sudden it lost the human touch it could only handle so much. People still wanted to deal with those kind of off the wall cases. And so we went, we kind of shifted away from that automation, went back to more human touch really kind of during the, the great recession. And now we're kind of pulling back to automation. The reality is that at the end of the question is correct. A hybrid approach to NLP, AI and actual human touch is like kind of euphoria there, right? Because we as humans do want to interact with another human. Now, every one of us is different. Some people, hey, full automation is great. Other people like, no, I want to talk to a human. Other people like, sometimes I need a really simple thing and deal with me in an automated fashion, or I'd love to deal with speech or you know NLP for, for voice biometrics and other things, but then understand the three things I've already gone to do on your website or whatever I'm trying, problem I'm trying to solve. I really need to speak to kind of a tier three customer service agent around my home network issues or, or whatever it may be. When solutions can determine with, you know, determine that intent and make it seamless, everything's beautiful, right? And, and that's where things should go. That's where we kind of envision things going as well. And, you know, I think it's, it's still like ahead of its time. And the fact that like we can build, we've built the technology that can do those things, not all brands understand like the process changes that have to go through to make that happen because the reality is that the marketing messages out there are still contact center bolt on virtual agent bolt on virtual or bolt on this like everything's a bolt on and so you, it doesn't transition seamlessly and you can't determine intent and and make it flow all the way through um we're coming close to time so probably a few final questions how would you try to approach executives in a traditional sector such as government about benefits of your platform? What aspects can be the most important or I guess biggest bang for the buck? Oh gosh, biggest bang for the buck. That's a tough one. Cause the one thing I'll say that's been interesting about government recently is there, there is an awakening to two things. One, we now have to modernize infrastructure. So we have to go to the cloud, right? Like there's a huge edict to move to the cloud finally. Um, two, is we need to connect with people out there to hear their voices, to, to get their information, and we need to become more efficient, right, in some fashion. And there, there will be another correction around, I mean, we're, we're spending money like crazy, right, as a, as a country. So there's, at some point, someone's going to say, hey, we need to kind of balance things, which is, you know, getting back to efficiency. The biggest thing I've seen in government so far, right, security always paramount, right? You, you got to have security in the platform. 
scale because most government departments are relatively massive. They might be lots of small call centers, but in totality, right, it's massive. And reliability because there's just really no patience for the general user when it comes to contacting a government service and the stuff doesn't work. So those three things are kind of, I think are big ticket items. I can tell you when, when we've spoken to government departments, that's one of the things that resonates because there is a lack of security throughout platforms today. And so having that is key. Um, but I think the next part, I mean, every government entity has a web and starting to have even more of a mobile presence. So being able to, I mean, I mean, we all know it, right? Government wants to know who you are, where you've been, what you're doing. <laughs> the more of that information they can capture to kind of skip some of those steps, either automate the front end or, or skip some of the steps and get it to a live person with the right kind of skill set is, is going to be key. So um, I would start with the first three. I mean, there's massive cost reductions, right, by moving uh, to cloud and the amount of people you need to maintain it. I mean, I've, I've sold the on-prem stuff in, in my past lives. And obviously the maintenance contracts and the amount of engineers they have on the back end doing services is off the charts. There's a, a massive cost savings as well. Cool, awesome. All right, this is gonna be our last question for now. What would be the journey for our business if we had no digital engagement already? This seems like a lot to do. Look, I, there's very rarely do you see or do we even see like a company kind of come in and just do big bang, boom, I'm, I'm taking everything in and we're just going to launch it day one, right? You start with kind of core infrastructure upgrades, like let's let's get the the platform up and running. And then, you know, depending what things you're already running today, like slowly kind of adding channels, making sure that you're getting your agents up and running all while doing process improvement at the same time, right? If you implement a new platform and you're just replicating the processes you already had, you might as well have kept what you already were doing, right? So unless there's something catastrophic, you start doing process improvement. And then, you know, the easiest thing to do is, is then pick off mobile presence. Everybody has some type of contact us, right? So it's really easy to then say, okay, we're gonna implement an SDK there. And the more advanced thing is like, okay, what we're gonna do around mobile. Like, do we have, do we have a mobile web page? Do we have a mobile app, right? Like, and, and so those are kind of, do we want a mobile app? I can tell you that there's a lot of brands that I've spoken to that don't have a mobile app but they're like, we need a mobile app. And so combining that and that, you know, that can be kind of phase three, phase four. You don't have to do it all today, but understanding your journey and finding a path to get there is key. And once everybody's on board with that journey, then you're on your way to that kind of CX uh, improvement. And that's really where we all need to be going because it affects all of us as individuals. Totally. Awesome. That we are coming up on time. So I think we are going to any other questions that, that do come in. Um, we'll keep an eye on the chat, but thank you again for your time today, Cecilia. This has been super fun, super informational. Um, and I hope everyone have, has a great day. Thanks again. Great. Thank you so much, Angela.